During this lecture, we'll be talking about genetic variation in natural populations. Now, the genetic variation is quite important for many reasons, including the determining potential for evolutionary change. Amount of variation allows us to know the importance of the evolutionary problems. And by the way, these are going to be discussed even further in further lectures that are going to be uploaded uh, rather soon. Speciation depends primarily on genetic variation. Because obviously, if the species or if the organisms within a population are going to be very close in terms of genetic makeup, there is no reason for speciation to happen in the first place. Ability of, of a population to persist is also heavily influenced by genetic variation. Because if a, if a certain population, for example, could only survive in cold weather and for some reason the temperature or the weather changed drastically in a certain location, then these are going to be, un if they were not genetically variable, all of the organisms in this population are going to be dying. Therefore, the whole, um, uh, basically the species within a certain geographical location are going to be going extinct. Whereas if there was genetic variation, some would survive and these are, were going to be com uh, continuing to breed and uh, produce even more offsprings and continue the uh, species in that certain location. Now, in order to measure the genetic variation, there are sev uh, several methods, some more accurate than the others. First of all, we, have, we can count them by observing the phenotypes, but that isn't very accurate because since uh, obviously most traits cannot be uh, visualized. Now, some traits like, for example, the eye color or the melanin pigment or uh, these stuff can be uh, can allow us, can give us a hint of how the genotypes are present within our body. However, it is not very accurate for the vast, vast majority of traits. Now, cytological evidence could also help and recall the example of the giant cells of the salivary glands of the Drosophila that we took in year two. Uh, protein electrophoresis can also prove to be uh, quite effective by allowing us to determine the genotypes of individuals which can be measured by either uh, the proportion of the polymorphic loci, the number of the, po uh, of the polymorphic loci divided by the total, and uh, the heterozygosity, which is the proportion of the loci that are het uh, heterozygous, the value of the 2pq. Now, uh, in order to calculate it, it's easy. We've got the h max is equal to the n minus 1 divided by n, n representing the number of the uh, individuals in a population. Now, if you want to talk about the protein electrophoresis, which is going to be giving us one of the more um, accurate indicators of the uh, genotypes of a certain um, species or a population, uh, it can be done by separating proteins as they move through a gel. And this is going to be based on their charge and their folding conformation. And this is going to be called the bidirectional electrophoresis. And if you'd like to know more about this technique, uh, feel free to watch other videos that are present online. It is a great and uh, fascinating, uh, fascinating technique. And moving on, as long as the proteins on an, on an allele produce a product with different charge, they will be separated. Since, just like we mentioned before, it is going, there are two major parameters that are going to be, uh, that upon them, the proteins are going to be separated. Therefore, a difference in charge will make the protein move a different, um, uh, like migrate to a certain location that is different from the primary protein. Now, it is worth noting that protein electrophoresis will miss a lot of genetic variation. By the way, this is exactly why I said that since it is one of the more accurate but not the best way in order to, um, in order to test for the polymorphic uh, loci. Now, uh, it is going to be miss, it's going to miss a lot of genetic variation because at the DNA level, uh, we have a number of silent nucleotide, uh, nucleotide changes that lead to no variation in the, at the protein level since we've, we might have a certain mutation and this mutation is uh, when translated to an amino acid, we might not have a change in the amino acid produced. Therefore, it is called silent and no change is going to be happening at the uh, major level. And uh, this uh, cannot be detected by protein electrophoresis since these proteins are going to be the same for both cases. Now, this ultimately leads to the underestimation of the total genetic variation. So recall that the point of this whole thing is to understand the total genetic variation. And while protein uh, analysis can be quite effective, it is definitely not the best. Uh, now. DNA markers, on the other hand, can uh, detect all changes, even single nucleotide, polymor uh, nucleotide polymorphisms, and these are going to be spoken about in later videos.